It has been estimated that as many as one in three hospital patients have a peripheral venous catheter in situ at any given time. That would mean that if you are assigned to five patients in a shift, at least two to three of them will be with peripheral intravenous access. Providing correct care to these patients is a vital competency for nurses who work with peripheral IV sites. Though it is not very complicated, patients can be harmed if nurses do not adhere to some basic principles. In this short video, we are going to discuss 1. The basic care points for patients with peripheral intravenous access. 2. The common complications that can occur if care guidelines are not adhered to. 3. The interventions to be undertaken to prevent these complications. 4. The do's and don'ts while handling peripheral parenteral nutrition. Hello friends, I'm Thankam Gomez, your facilitator. Let's start. Most of the points that I'm going to discuss today are very well known to you. I hope to shed some light into the rationale and together let's understand how we can protect our patients. Are we ready? Great. First things first. When it comes to infection prevention practices, there are three things that we need to keep in mind when handling any kinds of lines, catheters and drains. Number one, insert lines only if required. It is applicable for all kinds of lines, catheters, including peripheral IV cannula. Why? If you do not insert, then we do not have an at-risk situation. So, insert only if indicated. Number two, assess regularly for correct position and healthy site. All lines and catheters, including peripheral IV cannula and sites, must be assessed regularly at least every four hours. Make this part of your assessment during handover process in every shift. Two people checking will improve patient safety. Number three, ask every day, does this patient of mine need this line or catheter or drain? If the answer is no, please inform the doctor and remove it. Remove lines as soon as it is clinically not needed. If the peripheral IV site is showing any signs of inflammation or infection, just remove it and recite it only if clinically indicated. There is nothing called just in case. Longer the lines, the tubes and the catheters stay in place, higher the risk of complications. Okay friends, let's have a quick check on your understanding so far. Question number one. The basic things to be kept in mind when caring for peripheral IV sites are A. Use the smallest gauge, use the largest vein and use transparent dressings. B. Insert only if indicated, assess regularly and remove as soon as it is not required. C. 22 gauge cannula transparent dressing and remove after 3 days. D. Must check during handover. Did you get the answer right? The answer is B. Insert only if indicated. Assess regularly and remove as soon as it is not required. Now, the second question. One of the intervention that can promote hand hygiene before touching peripheral IV site is A. Teaching patients to be their own monitors. B. Training all nurses on the care needed. C. Keep hand disinfectant at the bedside. Did you get the answer right? The answer is A. Teaching patients to be their own monitors. Hope you got your answers right. Now, let's see what common complications are if we do not care for IV sites and IV lines. The common complications associated with peripheral IV sites can be remembered as four eyes. Inflammation, infection, infiltration and induration. Inflammation redness, warmth and swelling, signs that the vein is inflamed or we call it phlebitis 
there are three types of phlebitis mechanical phlebitis chemical phlebitis and infective phlebitis let's look at mechanical phlebitis large cannula sitting in a smaller vein rubbing against the vein wall causing inflammation is known as mechanical phlebitis how to prevent use the smallest cannula that you need for the purpose chemical phlebitis irritation caused by irritant drugs fluids hypertonic drugs strongly alkaline acidic drugs and infusions they can cause significant irritation if injected into a small vein with an inadequate blood flow how to prevent choose cannula smaller than the vein so that there is enough blood circulation at the tip of the cannula the third one infective phlebitis this is when microorganisms enter the vein through the puncture site these germs can come from the patient's own resident skin flora or from cross contamination of microorganisms onto the peripheral intravenous site and the injection ports infective phlebitis can be consequence of poor and hygiene practices of healthcare staff now how to prevent follow strict hand hygiene before and after touching IV sites connectors and lines so what should you do if you suspect phlebitis simple remove the cannula recite only if required this time make sure you have the correct cannula size in an appropriate sized vein the second eye is infection as discussed earlier infection can happen through the IV site line connectors and through fluids remember to follow aseptic practice when mixing additives to IV bottles and bags I'm sure all of you routinely check the IV bottles and bags for any cloudiness or contaminants please do that and remember hand hygiene ensure that you practice hand hygiene strictly so that we do not introduce infection leading to serious complications in our patients before touching the site and lines and sets do not forget to perform hand hygiene it's best to avoid touching them even if you have performed hand hygiene one of the sure way of ensuring that all healthcare providers perform hand hygiene is to teach our patients to remind their care providers to perform hand hygiene for every IV accession. And when you access IV, ensure that you scrub, not clean the access ports with 70% alcohol for 15 seconds and most importantly, allow it to dry. This is popularly known as scrub the hub, ensure friction. Avoid routine disconnections, keep a closed intravenous system. Ensure that the transparent dressing is intact. Change if it's loose or wet. Why is transparent dressing recommended? We can observe the insertion site frequently and remove at the very first sign of redness or inflammation. The transparent dressing can be left for 72 hours and thereby it reduces cost for patient and it also reduces your time. Change IV cannula and regular IV sets every 72 hours. Cannula inserted in an emergency need to be changed in 24 hours. Why? All aseptic precautions might not have been followed in an emergency. Now we come to the third eye that is infiltration. We use the terms infiltration and extravasation when any fluid gets leaked into the surrounding tissues. Infiltration is when non-vesicant fluids are leaked into surrounding tissue and extravasation is when vesicant fluids are leaking into the surrounding tissues. How to prevent? Neat insertion. Avoid multiple pricks. Avoid the joints and veins which are below used IV sites. Such complications are bad and sad. Though it is not totally avoidable situation, it must be noticed by a nurse on the first sign of leakage and then we can prevent such harmful consequences. I am sure that you do not want this to happen to your patients. 
This happens only when nurses fail to observe the IV sites frequently. Dear friends, no shortcut here. Observe, observe, observe. Whenever you are at the bedside to check on the patient, giving medication, checking on chlorine, changing IV bag, anything, please check the IV site and surrounding area whenever you are at the bedside. This is a must-do safe practice so that we can detect any problem before it gets big. The fourth and the last I is induration. Simply put, you have neglected the patient on the first sign of redness and now it has become swollen and cord-like. It is also known as thrombophlebitis where the vein is painful, cord-like swelling running along the length of the vein or its branches. This takes a long time to resolve. Did you ever experience this? I have. I hope you never experience this. We should never allow this in our patients. Time for two quick questions. Question number one. Why do we use transparent dressing? A. To observe the site frequently and remove at the first sign of redness or tenderness. B. Follow hospital policy. C. You can keep it for seven days. D. All of the above. Let's see which answer is correct. Yes, it is A. To observe the site frequently and remove at the first sign of redness or tenderness. Now, the second question. What is to be kept in mind when accessing peripheral cannula for medication and IV fluids? A. Clean the port with 70% alcohol. B. Wipe with alcohol swab. C. Scrub the port with 70% alcohol for 15 seconds and allow it to dry. D. Any of the above. Let's see which answer is correct. Yes, it's C. Scrub the port with 70% alcohol for 15 seconds and allow it to dry. Well, hope you got your answers right. Okay friends, now that we know what are the complications that can happen if you are not diligent when caring for our patients, let's now discuss the most important must-dos when caring for patients with peripheral IV lines. The most important one, yes, you guessed it right, perform hand hygiene. Before and after palpating the accession sites, before and after insertion of and accession, before and after dressing the site. How will you perform hand hygiene? Wash with soap and water or use hospital approved antiseptic hand rub. Follow the recommended volume, friction and duration for an effective hand hygiene. Do teach patients that all care providers are expected to perform hand hygiene before and after touching them or any lines, tubes or catheters on them. They become your safety champions. Do ensure that the site is secured well with the transparent dressing. If you do not fix the dressing well, it increases the risk of phlebitis, infection, occlusion, infiltration and dislodgement. You don't want that to happen. Ensure that the dressing is adhering well on all edges and the patient is educated not to touch that area. Do include checking peripheral IV sites during handover. Four eyes are always better than two eyes. Just because most patients are with IV cannula, don't be casual about peripheral IV sites. It can lead to serious complications in the vulnerable patients. Don't keep the IV cannulas longer than you need. Remove them as soon as possible. Visual infusion phlebitis score or known as VIP score is a useful tool to assess sight. Please remember to document your findings. Please do know your hospital policies and follow them. Do change IV cannula and IV lines as per recommendation. Let's now review a couple of questions. Question number one. How often should we change the IV cannula? A. If inserted in emergency within 24 hours. B. 7 days. C. 72 hours. D. 
A and C. Let's see which answer is correct. Yes, it's D. Both A and C are correct. Now the second question. The three things to be kept in mind for an effective hand rub. A. The eight steps. B. Use chlorhexidine. C. Volume, friction and duration. D. Kept at the bedside. Was your answer correct? If you choose C, then you are right. Volume, friction and duration. Apart from administering medication, blood and other IV fluids, we can now administer parenteral nutrition also through peripheral IV cannula. The use of PPN or peripheral parenteral nutrition offers a safe possibility to feed patients when their oral and enteral feeding is inadequate or not possible. Traditionally, it used to be administered through a central venous axis. We all know that central axis is associated with more complications. Now, nurses can easily start a parenteral nutrition via peripheral cannula and expedite the journey of healing. How? Because we do not need to wait for a doctor to insert the central line and verify the placement. The PPN has osmolarity within the recommended limits. The osmolarity in simple terms is the thickness of the fluids. Reduced osmolarity reduces the incidence of thrombophlebitis. The reduced osmolarity is achieved by increasing the percentage of lipids which has a osmolarity closer to the blood. The PPN or peripheral parenteral nutrition comes in an easy to mix three chamber bags. It's easier and safer to use one bag than three different bottles. This also reduces the incidence of thrombophlebitis and other complications. Let's quickly review a few do's and don'ts when handling peripheral parenteral nutrition. Use 18 to 22 gauge cannula in a larger way. Adequate blood flow around the cannula reduces the chances of phlebitis. Observe sight frequently, remove at the first sign of trouble. What are the early signs you remember? Pain and redness. Good. The lines and sets are recommended to be changed daily. IV cannula is recommended to be changed every 72 hours. Ensure blood tests are done as ordered by the doctor and send them without delay. Remember to check the results and inform the doctor. Learn the procedural guidelines of the product and follow them for safety. Now, some don'ts. Use a transparent dressing but don't put any opaque dressing. Why? You will not be able to observe the site. And do not put tape and gauze over the transparent dressing since it blocks your view of the site. Ensure a dedicated access for PPN and this will reduce the risk of thrombophlebitis. Do not use the PPN port for anything else. And do not forget to monitor side effects and complications. CBC, blood sugar, renal and liver function tests are to be monitored. Do not forget to watch out for fluid overload because some patients may have fluid overload due to the increased volume being administered through PPM. Now, your last two review questions. Question number one. Why is it recommended to use peripheral parental nutrition? A. Does not need an invasive central line. B. Easy for a nurse to start. C. It is less time consuming. D. All of the above. What was your answer? D. Great. All the statements are correct. Now, your very last question. Question number two. List one item that is not part of peripheral line care and PPM. A. Change site every seven days. B. Watch for fluid overload. C. Change dressing every 72 hours. D. Watch blood count, sugar, KFT and LFT. What was your right answer? Yes, it's A. Change site every seven days. Well done. Okay, now that you got the last two answers also correct, 
Let's summarize the highlights of what we discussed in this video. So first, insert IV cannula only if needed. Select appropriate site and size of cannula. Follow strict aseptic precautions during insertion. Close observation and review the need daily. Remove as soon as it is not clinically indicated. Above all, ensure correct and complete hand hygiene before and after touching the site and handling lines. Avoid touching key sites and key parts. Dressings and change of lines and sets must be as per hospital protocol with strict asepsis. If patient is on PPN, keep a close watch for the test results as we discussed earlier. Watch out for fluid overload as well. So friends, in short, be a patient safety champion and ensure safe care. Hope this short video helped you to learn or relearn the practical tips to avoid complications of peripheral intravenous site. Great! Bye for now and safe nursing.